This isn't just an issue of privacy and security anymore. This is an issue of trust. How many times does a CEO of the largest social network in the world have to lie until people realize his nefarious product can't be trusted? Just a few days ago, Facebook went public about the largest data breach in its 14-year history. Just as Facebook executives promised to be better prepared for the upcoming presidential election campaign in the US, the attack of unknown origin exposed Facebook accounts of 50 million users. Fairly enough, accounts of the Zuck himself and Sheryl Sandberg were also included in the breach. What's funny though, is that as the news coverage about this breach was spreading viral, Facebook automatically blocked it as spam, making it less likely people would find out about the breach in the first place. So here I am, making a video about it. It's time to stop using Facebook. Facebook apologized for both the breach and the censorship of the coverage, but we begin to see a pattern here. There is this unhinged urge to ignore user consent and pursue corporate goals at all costs, and then if something goes wrong, they can just say sorry without suffering consequences. Facebook apologizes to Texas newspaper for part of Declaration of Independence being labeled Facebook apologizes for promoting a false story on Megyn Kelly in hashtag trend. Facebook apologizes to Myanmar rights group apologizes for real name policy that forced drag queens to apologizes for deleting free speech groups post apologizes for breach of trust in Facebook apologizes for Facebook's data privacy scandal in full page number apologizes to US Congress Facebook apologizes to LGBT community and promises changes the real name policy and i'm really sorry that this happened huge breach of trust major breach of trust and i am so sorry really sorry for that and i'm sorry mark's really sorry for that and i'm sorry i'm really sorry and i'm sorry for it and mark's really sorry i think it's time to say enough Remember the time Zuckerberg said Facebook doesn't make shadow profiles on non-Facebook users for advertising purposes? Facebook has detailed profiles on people who have never signed up for Facebook, yes or no? Uh, Congressman, in, in general, we collect data from people who have not signed up for Facebook for security purposes to prevent the kind of scraping that you were just referring to. So these are called shadow profiles? Is that what they've been referred to by some? Uh, Congressman, I'm not... I'm not familiar with that. I'll refer, I'll refer to them as shadow profiles for today's. Turns out that was a lie. If one of your friends signs up for Facebook and gives them their list of contacts with their phone number included, Facebook gives advertisers ability to target your phone number even if you never used Facebook at all. And what's most hilarious is that Facebook will not let you see or delete this shadow profile because it would violate your friend's privacy according to Facebook's terms of service. Have you ever thought about turning on two-factor authentication to secure your Facebook account? You probably didn't know that as you gave up your phone number to receive security codes, Facebook also used it for targeted advertising. Essentially, Facebook is giving you a choice between privacy and security, and you can't have both. Hmm, who else said that? Uh, you can't have 100% security and also then have 100% privacy and zero inconvenience. Did you follow the Cambridge Analytica scandal where Facebook exposed profiles of 87 million users to presidential campaigns without users' consent? Facebook had actually been hammered over its policy that enabled Cambridge Analytica to obtain the data four years before that happened. Their privacy policy used to have a clause that allowed Facebook to sell data to third-party advertisers. In 2010, many, if not all, popular apps and games running on Facebook, like Farmville and Texas Hold'em Poker, were transmitting data about Facebook users and their friends to advertisers. And this would even affect people that opted out of this form of advertising or set their profiles to be completely private. You might not care about your private data leaked in this instance, which I find hard to conceptualize, but do you also not care about Facebook proactively ignoring users' consent and straight out lying to users about its practices? What else are they going to lie about? Is Facebook going to lie and censor when Mark Zuckerberg runs for president? Facebook privacy policy has always been a giant mess that no one could understand. But even if you tried to read through it, you would still not get the whole picture about what Facebook knows about you. 
Until just recently, Facebook has not only been collecting your Facebook site and app data, like chat messages, posts, likes, etc., but they would also obtain data you generated entirely outside of Facebook. And not just outside of Facebook, but outside of the entire internet. Have you ever signed up for a loyalty card in a brick and mortar retail store? If you gave them your phone number, Facebook collected that information and tracked your purchasing history for targeted advertising. Gave up your email address to sign up for a newsletter and offers? Most likely, that information was handed to Facebook too. And if your email address in the newsletter matched with the email address on your Facebook account, you were bombarded with relevant ads based on collection you might have never even imagined was possible. Facebook can never be trusted what they say about protecting your privacy. When Facebook got that sweet deal to acquire WhatsApp, they promised to maintain the no ads, no games, no gimmick policy. Not anymore. Facebook admitted they will use WhatsApp data to target ads. WhatsApp was essentially a money-losing, giant, global registry of phone numbers that was apparently worth $22 billion. Now take a look at Zuck's testimony before the US Congress. The big topic during the congressional hearings was whether or not Facebook sells data. Facebook doesn't sell data. We sell data to advertisers. You don't sell data. Collecting and selling our data. We do not sell data to advertisers. Of course you sell data. We don't sell people's data. You sold the data. I disagree with that characterization. Thank you for coming. But Facebook doesn't need to sell your data. It makes most sense for them to follow you everywhere you go to increase the value of their own network and lock it down so that no one else can benefit from the precious Facebook data. The more efficient they make their network, the more they can charge advertisers for targeted ads. And even if you think you are somehow above ordinary humans and are resistant to advertising or just ignore ads, there are files on top of files of Facebook studies proving how overwhelmingly effective Facebook is at advertising. Facebook doesn't work like Google AdWords. They don't require an immediate response from you. Rather, Facebook ads are trying to plant an idea in your head, to introduce you to a new product, to get a name stuck in your head, to improve how you feel about a company. Almost every TV commercial functions this way, and marketers are willing to pour millions into this system. At Facebook, 70% of marketing campaigns get three to five times returns on money invested in ads. That's why Cambridge Analytica or even Obama campaign were so much after Facebook data. Because in the long run, they are extremely efficient at slowly but surely influencing voters' minds. You might think you are totally immune to manipulation, but I know I am human. Because you're human. And I was human. I am human. Still. Um, and I don't want to be part of this psychological warfare called advertising. I'm not even gonna get to all the shady stuff Facebook is involved in. The list is too long for this video. And I guess if you still want to hold on to your Facebook account, I don't know what else would change your mind. But Facebook does one thing that's absolutely disgusting. Social experiments. Mary, nice to meet you. Fuck you. He's got pranked, bro. The top of the list is the emotional manipulation experiment. In 2014, Facebook actually proudly admitted to actively change content and news feeds of 689,000 users to measure how much they can manipulate their emotions. It turns out that Facebook was very efficient at influencing how people feel by changing the amount of emotionally negative or positive posts from their friends. Facebook never informed the users about the experiment, quite possibly breaking the federal law requiring signed written consent from users and approval from Institutional Review Board. And the execs at Facebook even refused to apologize. In 2010, Facebook was experimenting with influencing the real-world voter behavior of more than 61 million users. The results of the study concluded that political messages directly influenced self-expression, information seeking, and real-world voting behavior of users who received them, but also the user's friends and friends of friends. The effect of social transmission on real-world voting was greater than the direct effect of the messages themselves. Then in 2016, Facebook decided it would turn off visibility of news coverage in six random countries to measure the impact on democratic discourse. Turns out that impact was pretty huge, as percentage points of views fell by double digits overnight for most publishers. What a great schizophrenic idea to combat fake news. 
And speaking of fake news, you can never trust the content you see on Facebook. The platform claims the monopoly on truth and is implementing policies that censor content and entire groups, left and right, mostly right. Zuckerberg himself openly promises to be better at policing the platform, effectively giving people directions what they can and can't think on the network. That means that we need to now take a more active view in policing the ecosystem. Imagine the effect this is going to have on a new generation for which Facebook is the gatekeeper to the entire internet. How carefully selective portions of information they are going to be served in order to create a perfectly docile population. In 1970s, we were promised to have a colony and moon by now. Instead, we got Mark Zuckerberg's version of the world. Facebook, a corporation that evades taxes, manipulates people, censors speech, filters information, invades privacy, corrupts our politicians, perpetually deceives, and its CEO wants to be the president of the most powerful country in the world. There aren't any more red lines Facebook needs to cross. Mark Zuckerberg's corporation is over. We don't need it. We never asked for it. It does more harm than good in the long run. It's time to stop Facebook.